Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another post-game show here on the Hockey Writers YouTube channel. I'm your host, uh, Matthew Zator, and of course, joined in by Jim Bay and Terry Collins here and covering the Stanley Cup final. And it's still going on. Uh, we don't have a Stanley Cup winner yet. Uh, the Lightning pull it out 3-2 in uh, the third period uh, with Andre Palat scoring at the 13-38 mark of the third period. Um after the abs didn't lead at any point in this game, uh, they were trailing and tied it up a couple times. Um, we'll start with you, uh, Jim. The Lightning are still alive. Uh, what did you think of this game? What were your impressions? Well, it, it was just kind of another typical gritty effort by the Lightning when they're down. I mean, we we've seen this, you know, all all playoff. You know, they were down in Toronto. They were, you know, down, and and they just they refused to give up. Mm -hmm. As we talked about, I, you know, I think before um, they, they are not going to go away quietly, no matter what happened in the first two games where they got blown out. Um, it, the game kind of went as expected. Uh, it, it was just, you know, an outstanding effort to, um, you know, do whatever they needed to, you know, put pucks in the net Um slow down, you know, Colorado's, you know, speedy offense and stuff. It, I mean, it's just that, that common thing. I don't, I don't know any other ways to keep saying, yeah. <laughs> you know, what, what, you know, let me get out my thesaurus resiliency, what, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, this team is showing that, you know, there's a reason why they're in their third straight Stanley cup. And now for, you know, Tampa, they're going back home. You know, granted, they lost there last time, but there's a, you know, a little bit of comfort in that. And we we kind of got ourselves a series again. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Sunday night will be very, very interesting to see how how both teams come out. Yeah, and it was a totally different game from from those two first two games uh, at home where basically Colorado just dominated both games and it didn't look like the lightning should have been in this series and even be in the Stanley Cup final at all. Like we were talking on those games. So um, Carrie, uh, what'd you think about the avalanches effort in this one? Uh, you know, they had a chance to win the Stanley Cup on home ice um, played a really good game. It was, but I gotta say another pretty evenly matched game throughout. Uh, what'd you think about this game from the avalanche? Well, yeah, I mean, you're looking at, you know, another game where they had north of 35 shots, um, <laughs> you know, just kind of got uh, ran into, you know, an awesome goalie. And the biggest thing is that you could take from these last two games is, yeah, they're still in the lead. They're up three to two. But in the last two games, the only time they've led is when Kadri's goal went in. Like, yeah. that was it. Like, they've been behind in these last two games the entire time. And I mean, except for until the first goal was scored of course yeah but <laughs> you know but they haven't led in either of these games and when you you know you look at you look at the last couple of games I mean Kadri's goal yeah good goal but um out of the two they scored tonight and the other two they scored on Wednesday uh out of those like four goals like three of them went off a of skates or a leg or something. I mean, they're really not beating uh, Vasilevsky, uh, you know, just five on five with some awesome mm -hmm. passing or a great play. They're getting these greasy, greasy goals, which they're not used to getting that many of these. And to be, to need that many, they're just, it's just hard uh, because it's just a, uh, not the way that they're used to doing things. It's not their MO <laughs> and it makes it really tough when they have to grind it out because, you know, they want to blast off on you and get these three on twos or two on ones and, you know, get in the zone and yeah, cycle around and, you know, get these great uh, chances with guys like McCarr and McKinnon. And they're not, they're getting them from guys like Nachuskin and, you know, are like, these are, these are like, prototype Gabriel Landis got goals yeah. like the types of goals that he scores so it, it just seems like they're getting the breaks to stay in it and then you know in game four to get Kadri's goal well then in this game they just didn't get the next one and then finally Palat he's been good all series but mm -hmm. you knew one of these third periods he was gonna <laughs> probably come up with something and then he did and I mean if I'm Colorado geez you're you're doing everything. You're right. You're throwing all kinds of shots at the net. I just think they're, I don't know if you change really that much. Mm -hmm. You just kind of keep going with what you're doing. It's just, 
it's it's a different series now, though. I mean, Vasilevsky's yeah. different. Yeah, and well, there's a good note for the next talk we're going to talk about is the goaltending. Um, Vasilevsky, well, obviously, has been really good throughout the series and since since game two. Uh, game two, it's that seven nothing uh, thing. <laughs> but since then, um, he's been he's been really good. And like I say, only goals that have been going in on him are things that have been like deflecting off guys. So, uh, Jim Vasilevsky, I mean, is another difference maker. They had over thirty shots. Um, was he, can he keep this up? I don't want to say, because again, he's going to have to be a guy that'll stop that many shots again, the next two games, if they want to uh, do this three-peat. Yeah. Oh, he definitely, he definitely can do it. Um, um, you know, he's, he's shown in series as before. I mean, with the, with the two previous Stanley cups, he, he played, you know, a, a, an excellent game, um, you know, again, tonight, You'd like to have seen him, you know, not give up that first rebound that, um, you know, Colorado got for the first goal. You know, I think most of the time he can snare that, but you know, that, you know, those things are going to happen in a hockey game and Colorado's taking advantage of it. Um, You know, he is facing a lot of shots, but you know, the good thing is he can play this way as long as Tampa plays this well in front of him. Hmm. Colorado's getting a lot of shots, but they're not, as, as Carrie alluded to, they're not kind of the typical shots mm-hmm. that Colorado is usually, you know, getting on them. Um, you know, it, it's, it's kind of interesting. Like, yeah, let him shoot. As long as Vasilevsky can see the puck, he can swallow up rebounds. He's going to, you know, he's going to stop, you know, 35 out of 37 shots like that on a given night or, or even more if he doesn't cough up rebounds. So, you know, yes, he definitely can do that. That should be, you know, again, Tampa Bay has a, a, a ton of confidence in him. And, you know, at this point, we're going to wonder, you know, are we getting in Colorado's head a little bit? Mm-hmm. Um, again, their two goals, as Kerry alluded to, were, were the grinded out kind of mm-hmm. goals, which, you know, is going to happen in a hockey game. But they're not sniping pack, uh, you know, pucks past him. The, the blocker side, which gave him trouble in the Ranger series and early in the Colorado series, he seemed to have made the, uh, you know, the adjustment. Um, it, it's still, you know, overall, it's still probably his weakest area and they're still going to be firing at it. But at least for now, he's got that controlled where it's, it's not costing them games. Yeah. And that, and that's the thing, like, they're going to start having to think, you know, we're only going to be able to beat them if we get deflections off guys. So it's, it's not like first two games. Uh, carry on with Darcy Kemper. Um, what do you think of his performance in this game? I mean, that first goal wasn't the best. I mean, uh, he probably should have stopped that one. And then even the third goal, but what do you think about Kemper? Yeah. The first goal for sure seemed like a real softy. And I mean, that was such a huge one because, on two fronts. Number one, you've got a team that's fighting for their lives and all of a sudden they say, okay, we got this, you know, Mm -hmm. because they get the first one. And number two, Colorado is so much better when they get that first Mm -hmm. goal. It seems like, you know, that breaks the dam open for them. (laughs) You know, a lot of times where they'll get that first goal and they were, you know, like we said, there's piling up a bunch of shots. I mean, you look at these games in this series You've got 38, 30, 39, 37, 37. And the game that they had 30 is the game they scored seven goals. And it's because the third period was just kind of, all right, let's just zap this clock, you know? (laughs) So it's like, Vasilevsky is different in that he, I think he knows going in, all right, I got to make, I got to stop 35. Mm -hmm. If I stop 35, we're probably going to be okay. (laughs) And where Kemper coming into this one, you know, coming off of, you know, both of them had a pretty good game in that last one, but then all of a sudden he gives up that easy one first. And it's kind of like, Oh no, <laughs> like which one are we going to get here? You know, the guy, like, uh, you know, the guy that we just saw in game four or the guy that we saw in game three, you know, that, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's just kind of, like, you know, it, it's tough because they've got so much, you know, going right. And then, Vasilevsky is just doing what we all kind of expected him to do Mm. well when he's doing that Kemper's gotta match that and 
as I mean, I understand that's just like saying, Hey, go fly that plane. It, you know, yeah. I mean, it's hard, like it's really hard and they're not getting as much shots, but they're, they're, they're getting the bounces too. Just like Colorado is like that. Like you look at that third goal, you know, that's a good bounce for them. Mm-hmm. They, you know, they finally got one <laughs> yeah. after four games. So it's like, uh, He's got to be so much better, especially if Vasilevsky on the other side is going to be Vasilevsky of the last two years. And he's been that the last couple of games. And then, you know, you get a good goal from Kadri to win the game and put him on the brink here. But I mean, I just think he's got to be better, especially that first goal that that cannot Mm -hmm. happen or it's going to bite you. And it did again tonight. Yeah, and and that's the thing is that he's got to at least match what Vasilevsky is doing um, and make the saves that he needs to. He might not have to be amazing, but makes the saves he has to. And um, yeah, we'll we'll see what happens in the next game. And uh, both goaltenders kind of follow the same, or we'll see we'll see from uh, game three or game four of how how it was then. So let's talk about another thing we've kind of been talking about throughout this series is special teams. And this has been one that's been largely won by the avalanche. Uh, this game, not so much. Uh, the lightning scored on the power play and then killed all of the avalanches power plays for the first time in this series, I believe. So uh, Jim, what do you think? Uh, was this a major difference uh, and uh, can they keep it going for in the next uh, couple games? I think the major difference, as you alluded to, was the uh, the, the penalty kill, because uh, you know Colorado was clipping around like a fifty percent, mm-hmm. you know, uh, rate of scoring on 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 their power play, and you know they shut them down tonight. That that was extremely huge, because um, that that has um, bedeviled them throughout this entire series, mm-hmm. and it's really been the difference because, um, you know, Tampa Bay's outscored Colorado five on five throughout the series. It's, it's been, you know, the power play where they, they really struggled and on their own power play, it wasn't great tonight. They scored on the four on three. Right. Um, and, and you saw why Tampa Bay is usually good on the power play is when they have space and they move the puck so well that, you know, eventually Kucherov or Stamkos or somebody else is going to put in a goal Colorado throughout the series has done a great job of, of shutting that down on a regular power play. But when you get four on three and you have that much space to let Tampa Bay operate, um, you know, it, it, it was inevitable. It, it was just, mm-hmm. you know, they're, they're too good to, to, you know, give them that much space and give them the opportunity to do what they do best. So they, they need to especially continue the, the penalty killing into, you know, the next game or games, if it happens to go that far, because, uh, it, it, you know, as much as you like to say, you know, stay out of the penalty box, look, stuff happens. We saw a handful of penalties tonight where that they were just, you know, they weren't dirty. They weren't anything really bad. You had sticks that got caught in between legs. You had a high stick because somebody was trying to, you know, lift a stick stuff like that, you know, happens in hockey, even, even in the playoffs, you're not going to go through, you know, a game where, where the, you know, the referees aren't going to call any penalties. So that will be critical for them to, you know, continue that effort in, in, you know, Sunday night's game six. Well, the thing is, is that, you know, they're, they also got, uh, and they, they also got that too many men call again. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that Cooper was complaining about in the last game, yeah. but he got one at the end there. So. <laughs> well, and that was, that was a tough penalty, but again, you know, as they, they pointed out, they, they did the nice pull away screen to see it, it was just way too obvious. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, we can, we can debate, uh, you know, the, the previous one, all we want and the technicality and how much that's called and not called during the game this was extremely obvious and it it was, you know, a a very, you know, kind of crucial penalty. And then, you know, what Tampa Bay did good. I don't think they were, I mean, I think they were trying to score, but Mm -hmm. they were definitely making sure that they didn't do anything that would lead to, you know, a breakaway an odd man rush the other way, because as we already saw, Colorado is really dangerous, shorthanded. They've got people that can, you know, on their penalty kill that can just get that puck out of there and create opportunities. So, uh, you know, penalties, huge, that one, 
you know, it, it, that was, that's, that's tough. That was a really yeah. tough penalty to take, but you know, what are you <laughs> going to do? It happens. It happens. Yeah. Um, Carrie, I mean, on Colorado's power play, did, were they doing anything differently that, that uh, why the lightning were able to stop them finally this time? I mean, they, they only had two power plays. I mean, it's not like they had a lot. Um, yeah, they had, and only three I mean, they shots, had chances so. and stuff too on that power play on the power plays, but it's just, um, you know, back on that last too many men on the ice penalty. That was a killer that ended the game. I mean, mm-hmm. it's just, okay, let's just knock it around here for a couple of minutes and then see if they can score in 30 seconds. Go ahead. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> or 40 seconds, whatever they had left. But I mean, the bigger thing is, is that, you know, Tampa scored on the power play. Yeah, it was a four on three, but you don't want to let those guys get started. Yeah. You know, and then you've got Colorado that they only had the two power plays, which is probably the biggest, you know, thing is they've been getting three, four, or five. I mean, mm-hmm. there was a game in against Edmonton where I think they had seven. And yeah. like they have scored a power play goal or had scored a power play goal in I think, you know, eight of their last nine games or something like that. And I mean it was or nine of their last 10 games, something like that. It was, they scored in every game of this series. They scored in every game, but one of the last series series, and they scored in the last two games against <laughs> you know, yeah. St. Louis. So for them to be held off the sheet. Yeah. It's one thing, but to give them only two, that it's, I mean, that's where it mm. starts. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so for them to only get two was a big deal. It was just, uh, but yeah, when they've scored, like Corey Perry had the power play goal and the other win. I mean, it, it's just so huge with, with how tight and close these teams are mm. that it seems like that power play goal always seems to make the big difference in the game. And yeah, that last penalty, what are you going to do? You knew something like that was going to happen, but I agree with Jim. That was just so obvious. You yeah. just got to go, Hey, come on, guys. Like, <laughs> come on. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but well, uh, it's just that, yeah, it was unfortunate when it happened because you just wonder how much pressure they get, all that mm-hmm. stuff um, or anything. Because, I mean, I just think McKinnon was flying out of the bench. He yeah. was ready to go. He was going to like, I'm going to go do this right now. And I think that was part of it was he was just yeah, it's you know, McKinnon go. and just being super amped, like, all right, here we go. But, um, I mean, I if Tampa Bay can shore that up and not take some of those penalties, it's going to be huge because Colorado's been killing everybody on the yeah. power play. Yeah, and that's the thing. Special teams, I think, will end up being the difference in this series. I mean, when we look back on it, and uh, we'll see who comes out on top in the next one um, because it's going to be key. Before we wrap up, I want to talk about, which we've talked about quite a bit in this series, is the injury factor. Um, You know, we thought Sorelli and Cernak weren't going to play in this game. Well, Cernak for sure. Sorelli may have because he did play the rest of that game. Um, Jim, did they... How do you feel they looked in this game, uh, both of them? Because, I mean, obviously they're not 100%. Yeah, Cernak struggled. You you could kind of tell he wasn't skating, um, you know, the way he – and moving the way he usually does. Uh, he took – he blocked another shot off. Yeah. I think it was foot. And, uh, <laughs> you know – Again, I gotta say it again. You gotta love hockey players. These guys are such <laughs> warriors, man. And on both sides, you, you know, you can go with you know the the Colorado guys like Cadre coming back from an injury so yeah. quickly and different things like that. Tampa Bay's beat up. Um, Cooper has said, um, I think in one of his uh, you know pressers, th- this has definitely been the the most difficult um, you know period of time with injuries and stuff that he's had in the three years, um, and they're. Obviously, they, they keep fighting through it. They're going to keep fighting through it. it. They just have to hope at some point they can get through two more games, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, and you know, grind out a couple of wins, um, you know, before their bodies just totally yes. give out. Because, uh, you know, everybody everybody's hurting this time of the year. It, it, yeah. it's, it's tough. This is, you know, you know, winning 16 games to win the Stanley Cup for any team is a grind. But, uh, you know, but especially for Tampa Bay this year, they, they've taken um, a lot of injuries. They, they're sacrificing their body. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the block shot total was. It didn't seem like it was as much as it was in a previous game. But, you know, they, they're still doing it. They're still giving up their bodies. With Sorelli, um, again, you know, the face-off issue, he didn't, he didn't take face-offs. Yeah. 
you can kind of tell, I think the arm, the movement affected his skate. He fell down a couple of times where he going like, why is he falling down? But I think, you know, if, if you, you skate and there's something wrong with your body that you can't do your regular motions with your entire body, I think sometimes that'll throw you off, especially when you, you have to play at such a high level as they did. So, um, you know, again, we don't know exactly what it was. We're, you know, we, we heard it was a cut. So a mm-hmm. couple of days to heal up, maybe that gets better for him. But, um, you know, both guys really, you know, gutted it out as, as probably as best they could. Yeah. And I, like I said, I wasn't sure Cernak was going to play this game the way he looked in the last one. So, uh, you know, and again, a warrior that again, blocking shots, it's just what he does. And, uh, yeah, he's been really key. And even when he's not hundred percent, he's still doing his job. Uh, Carrie, I mean, looking at the avalanche side, I mean, Kadri, I mean, he played again, uh, and then looking at Kale McCarr, I mean, he had, he had, it looked like he was hobbling around a bit after that. Uh, um, you know, is that a concern? Uh, is he hurt now or, um, you know, <laughs> I don't know. It's hard. I don't know. It's hard when you're like, does Superman get hurt? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sort of thing. And I mean, I think he's, it looked like he kind of shook it off. He didn't look like he was in that much distress, I guess. But yeah, he was a little, you know, hobbled there when they had that one icing call and he kept, do you know, shaking it out, shaking the leg and trying to, you know, stay out there. So I don't think it was like super serious. Mm. He didn't look like he was held back, you know, that much. Um, Kadri though, too, he looked a little, you know, he was still involved in stuff. He only played fit. He'll have 15 minutes this time, but it's like, um, it, he had a ton of shots on goal where that was a good indication just from the standpoint of uh, they were kind of worried about him. You know, he can't take face offs. Can he grip the stick? How, how hard is his shot going to be? And I think the goal made him like, Hey, I can do all of this. Let's go out and try <laughs> it. And he might not have been as like impactful in like the hits game and, you know, stuff like that, the physical side, but I mean, looking here, yeah, seven shots on goal in the game. I mean, it, the more comfortable he gets, the better off they are. And mm-hmm. I, I just think if he sticks around and, you know, if he can keep doing that and keeping that pressure up, it takes a load off of guys like McKinnon, you know, that they seem like they're, and Landis Cog that they're sort of relying on in this series. And it's just uh, the McCarr thing. I, I, I mean, I'd be surprised if he didn't play, if it was anything more than just a little ding, but I mean, mm-hmm. You're sitting there now. I mean, both these teams, I just, we talked, we were shocked. I was, I was surprised that both Sorelli and Cernak played, yeah. but it's like, good luck keeping guys like that off the ice. Yes. I mean, it's just yeah. possible <laughs> at this time of year, um, you know, and I mean, like Sorelli only played, it looks like about a dozen minutes. So yeah, they were laboring for sure. Mm. But I mean, they're just, it's the same thing with dry at the end of that Western conference final, oh, he was on yeah. one leg. And he was still piling up points, yeah, but it was so. like, he was on one leg. There's just no way they were going to keep him off the ice. So I just think it's that same situation here. And I think McCarr will be fine. And Kadri looks, he yeah. looks better, you know, to us. I mean, seven shots on goal surprised me. And I mean, he was involved in stuff again. So that's all that they can ask. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's what, that's all the time of the year. Everyone's playing hurt. I mean, even the guys <laughs> that look, healthy i'm i'm sure are playing hurt uh it's it's those bruises and everyone's everyone's just hobbling around trying to, <laughs> trying to so uh and we'll see what happens in game uh in game six uh looking ahead to game six uh jim what do you think the lightning have to do to kind of you know bring this back to a game seven and uh and winner take all well they, they have to keep doing what they they've done the the past two games where they haven't let the avalanche take in control of the game with their offense. You know, the last two games is, you know, Kerry mentioned the avalanche haven't had a lead. Um, it, it's been, you know, one goal, one goal, one goal, one goal, different things like that. Mm-hmm. They kept the game close. They stay in it. They, you know, make sure that, you know, uh, Vasilevsky can do his, his kind of thing. Um, stay out of the penalty box, minimize, you know, the, the power play chances for uh, the avalanche and just continue to keep, 
you know, driving away, keep the pressure on Kemper. Um, you know, as we saw, he, he will give up the, you know, the, the soft goal on, on occasion. And, um, you know, they're going to have to do what they, they've done for, you know, the entire playoff series. They're going to have to keep grinding it out, grinding it out. And, and I think the more they can keep it into to a grind fest, mm. the, the better off, you know, the better chance that they have of, of winning a game six and forcing a game seven. Yeah. And I think that's, that's, yeah, it's going to be a big keys for, for them. I carry on avalanche side. I mean, they've done pretty well at coming back from losses. I mean, I don't think they've lost two in a row uh, in the playoffs. I, I yeah, this was only wrong. their fourth loss. Of yeah. the playoffs, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, odds are they're going to win next game, but uh, what do you think they need to do for adjustments uh, to do that? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's tough. Like, uh, I mean, the hard thing about playing Tampa at this time of year is they can, you know, they're chameleon like, they will adjust yes. on you. And it seemed like those first couple of games, um, even that first game at home, maybe even the first, you know, parts of the first three games, it was kind of like, let, let's just let, we can run with these guys. Let's just run with these guys. Yeah. And it kind of got them roasted in game two for sure, you know, <laughs> but uh, game three, they come back, win six, two. And then you look at these last two games and, you know, it's just been like, all right, let's grind it out, block a million shots. Uh, you know, like Jim said, they didn't uh, block as many shots in this one as they had been, but it's, um it's more of a tighter, like a grindier game. And I think mm. they did, you know, they're doing that. Uh, to try, you know, to try and get back into it, try and make it two, two going back here. But then they ended up getting this one and you look at these last two games and it's just different for Colorado. I mean, but like tonight, yeah, three to two late goal, late penalty and Tampa Bay, you know, kind of gets out of Colorado to go back to Tampa game four was kind of a coin flip game. Either mm -hmm. one of those teams could have won that game. So you look at these last two and they're so close and they've each traded mm -hmm. one but it's more of Colorado still doing their thing. It's just Cooper and that Tampa Bay coaching staff figured out, Hey, we're going to have to do this. or we're just going to get run out of the mm -hmm. rink, you know, and in, in four games or yeah, you know, yeah. five games. So it just seems like these last two games, they've made more of the adjustments where Colorado's gone. We're going to keep doing this. We're still getting mm -hmm. chances. We're still getting shots. We're scoring on the power play. Now yeah. some of that stuff stopped happening and, you know, and Tampa's like closing the gap. It seems like from those first two games in particular, and it just, uh, what adjustments do they have to make? I don't know. That's hard to say just because <laughs> of all of the things I just said. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's hard when you've got got you know, you got multiple guys that get a half dozen shots on goal and you're getting almost 40 shots on goal every night. It's just, you got to find that holes in that goalie. And sometimes that'll take you a little bit. And, yeah, he's a tough nut to crack, especially once he gets rolling, and it seems like he's rolling right now. Yeah, and uh, and I say a lot of people aren't really worried that after that seven nothing game because he's just he's he's known to bounce back, and that's what he's done. So uh, it's he's uh, he's a well known as being that type of goaltender. So we'll see what what we're talking about again. What we're talking about after game six, we'll be talking about a. I sound like a win or a game, a potential game seven. So uh, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. Uh, this, this series has been really good. I mean, this last two games have been what we expected it to be. I, a good, even back and forth type type game. And um, this has been good hockey to watch. So let's hope there's more because uh, we, we love, we don't want to end hockey yet. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> We'll see what happens in game six. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Carrie, for coming on the post game. We will um, make sure, again, make sure to check out the hockeywriters.com. There's that uh, QR code on your screen right now. Um, again, lots of draft stuff, lots of playoff coverage, um, lots of free agency trades, just lots of stuff on that website right now. Um, check that out. And we will see you after game six.